Okay, um, Saulus made a great um, comparison, drew a great parallel between COVID-19 and HIV. Um, HIV um, resulted in an intensified development of um, epidemiology and ID uh, medicine. So we will be talking about the um, different strategies for uh, detecting coronavirus in different groups of patients um, that are used at the moment. Um, as of the 21st of June, um, over 58,000 of patients with coronavirus have been registered in Belarus. Quite naturally. to be able to detect these patients, identify them. Um, numerous tests needed to be conducted. About uh, 800,000 tests in total. That were conducted since the um, 18th of April this year. To do these tests, an array of test systems was utilized. The quality of the test system is tantamount to the quality of the result, the data, the diagnosis, and the interventions um, that are administered. Um, we used um, a number of test systems that were Belarus-made and Russian-made. We did a number of DNA and RNA tests, and we also used um, tests uh, manufactured by Algamed. So the uh, efficiency um, for Biotech was 16.5%. Uh, so the uh, the um, efficacy ranged from 40 to 16%. So what can this be due to? Of course, there are different sites that get tested, different primers are used in the test systems. Of course, the materials that we take has an impact on the data quality. Let us compare Art Biotech. Art Biotech uses two sites. Biotechnology tests take three sites. So what did we get? Eleven thousand tests um, have been conducted. And of course, we won't be able to analyze all of them, so I'm going to provide you with the positive samples that we have. More often than not, the coronavirus was diagnosed among women over one, with over 1,000 cases. Uh, 700 of the cases were among men. As far as the ages were concerned, Of course, most severe forms of the disease are associated with 60-year-olds, um, with patients over 60. COVID-19 was mostly diagnosed among patients aged 30-39 or, uh, or 65 plus. However, um, 
this is the data for the 2,000 patient sample that I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation. A number of COVID-2 cases were diagnosed among young adults aged up to 19. Okay, so let us stop here. So this is the number of patients um, detected, diagnosed with COVID, broken down by age. However, there are still 8,000 other cases to, to analyze, but we won't be able to do that because of the time constraints. <clears throat> the, most, uh, the most affected groups include um, 32, 39-year-olds and um, 52, 65-year-olds. Our, uh, our laboratory is the only in the country that practices epidemiological surveillance. We study uh, donors, plasma donors, blood donors. The ones that we um, contact in Minsk and Minsk environs. So what you see here on the screen mirrors the immunity, uh, the immunological situation that exists in Belarus. It's the closest proxy, the closest point of access to um, the situation. Just 7% of the population have been tested. have antibodies to coronavirus. So, and this number, 7%, remains the same. We will see how the epi uh, epidemic is going to develop in autumn. We will see where it will lead us. And we will try to get a better understanding of uh, what proportion of the population will be um, will have antibodies to the coronavirus. As yet, um, freezing the samples, um, uh, managing the um, data is a fairly time-consuming process in my country. So we synthesize primers, we collect samples, and we hope that from September, um, that in September we will be able to begin sequencing, and we will obtain enough data by the new year. So this was a quick run through. Thank you for your attention.